So ultimately what we'd like to produce is a better, a more accurate wind forecast. And so what's really important for Nebraska Public Power is understanding the wind conditions, how fast the wind is blowing, uh, 24 to 48 hours out into the future. And we're doing that by incorporating uh, more data points into the weather model. And that comes from the Nebraska Mesonet, which is a statewide weather observation network. And we have about uh, 45 counties represented um, through 64 for weather stations. And those data currently do not go into a weather model. And what we're doing through this project is putting 64 more data points into this model and hoping to see improvements in the model output. So you put more data points into the model, hopefully you get better model results and we're able to give NPPD a better wind forecast. And this project would not be possible without the support of Nebraska Public Power District and the customers that are part of the district. Our research is looking at being able to store energy, such as wind, solar. There needs to be a technology to do that. Vanadium flow batteries is a way in which you can use metal ions to take that energy, convert it directly into stored chemical energy that can be then used at some other point in time. So a simple way to think about a vanadium flow battery would be the following. On one side you have a plus charge, on the other side you have a negative charge. But you want to keep them separate because if you don't, they'll recombine again and you no longer can use that energy. But if you keep them separated with this membrane material that we're designing, you can then put charge into each of these solutions. Those charges are what we use to move electrons, and electrons of course are what energy is. We can use that energy then to power a home or collect energy and thereby store energy indefinitely. And we're working on advancing those technologies. We want to understand how solar cells work, specifically the ones we make, because we're trying to make a better one. And uh, we proposed a set of facilities that would allow us to do uh, very sophisticated electronic measurements on photovoltaics, um, because you, you need to be able to do that in order to understand how they work so you can improve them. You know, you can simulate how a device works computationally. And then when you make the device, it never works like the simulation works, okay? And so the point then is, is to find out exactly where the real device is not working like the simulation device. And are there steps you can take to alleviate the problem? And how close can you get to the, uh, the ideal uh, efficiency? So we're looking for very, very subtle things that inhibit the ideal behavior of the solar cell. And uh, uh, that's mainly the gist of the project. One of the fascinating things about microorganisms is the diverse ways that they can live and survive. And with this project, one of the things we're going to exploit is their ability to use and consume electricity. So you and I, we will eat a hamburger and we're breathing oxygen. These microorganisms are going to eat the electricity and breathe the carbon dioxide, which is abundant within the atmosphere or potentially what has been sequestered from power plants. And when they do this, they can produce acetate, um, but also some of these other organisms convert that to a biogas wow. methane. That's what they're exhaling, which could be compressed and then potentially used later. But they can also produce other products, which do have economic interests such as isoprene. And so this project is allowing us, you know, not only to understand how these organisms do what they do, but also we're going to serve as a foundation for other projects going forward, which can have far reaching impacts across the state of Nebraska. So uh, our project is working with magnesium alloys so that they're more easily shaped because magnesium is difficult to deform and so if you put stress on a material you don't really want it to break right away. You want it to change shape before it breaks because breaking is catastrophic. And so our project is really looking at ways to make these magnesium alloys deform better 
Uh, magnesium is attractive because it has a very low density, but it is yet pretty strong. Uh, magnesium has a density of about a little more than half of that of, of aluminum and about a quarter of the density of steel. So if we could replace steel or aluminum in automotive applications, we have an opportunity to create weight savings. The lighter a car is, the more fuel efficient it is, and they can go farther on one charge, farther on one tank of gas. Basically, you get more miles per gallon out of your vehicle. So the project is about energy storage. Currently, there's more and more wind energy, solar energy, but those are fluctuating. Sometimes you have wind, sometimes you don't have wind. So a supercapacitor fits this, uh, this role pretty well. It's low cost and also charges pretty fast. So normal battery cannot do that. For the battery we use mostly like lithium ion battery, you actually move you know, atoms, lithium atoms, which is very heavy inside. Um, that's slow. Um, but supercapacitor, we actually move mostly electrons, which is much, much lighter and smaller. So that can be much, much faster. Uh, we attack the problem from introducing new materials and making their property better. Particularly, I'm working on the, um, the key part, which is the electrodes. Uh, using some special material um, to enhance the performance of the electrode. Uh, certainly we need something to continue to move this ahead. So MPPD and the uh, Nebraska Energy Center really came in the, at the right time, a critical time for us, um, to really make this research possible. Mm -hmm.